so hey guys and welcome to another video now, this is a very special video because not only are we looking at a very beautiful loco but this is to help celebrate 50 subscribers so um i just want to say thank you so much to everybody who subscribed to me now, i know 50 may not seem like a lot compared to bigger youtubers like you know inner city 82 and them but for me 50 is a huge milestone so i just want to thank everybody who subscribed to me and here's to the next 50. Now, as you've probably seen, the locomotive we're looking at is the Hornby Duke of Gloucester. Gloucester. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but I'll say Gloucester for now. Um, BR-462 Pacific Standard Class 8 locomotive. And what really makes it special is that it is DCC sound. was the twin track sound. The new sound system released by Hornby. So here's the box. It's because it's the premium range. It has the really nice box with the sleeve and the locomotive inside. So on the back of the box we have, the, you know, Hornby steam locomotive and then the information. And if you just want to pause and read that, I'll let you. And then there's a really nice picture of the engine. Um, and then like a list of the sound features so yeah and on the top you have like a little drawing a top view of the engine so yeah let's open the box and see how she looks now I really like this packaging because it's very protective all you do is just slide off the cover and then it's in this kind of Bachman style um, block of ice packaging hey you can see me so you just take carefully take it out and there's the local and then you also have the instructions so you have the sound guide and it tells you all of the different sounds that you can make so that's helpful and then you get the you know regular instructions for like DCC fitting and oiling and stuff but I won't be needing that because it's already DCC fitted and with DCC sounds so yeah so let's put that to one side and here is the logo and there's another sleeve to slide off and keep the camera down a bit and then open up the flap on the back put it out like that and carefully take the locomotive out. So I'll put the camera down so you can get a closer, a closer. Now this is a very gorgeous model. Hornby have really outdone themselves with this. So this is this will be a bit tricky because the engine and tender are permanent, semi permanently connected. Because you have to unscrew it to disconnect the tender, and the plug because the sound chip is in the tender, so it has wires going in between them. So I'll just have to deal with that. So first off, let's start with the front. You have really nice detail. You have rivets on the buffer beam. Um, some piping. Um, the buffers are not sprung, which is a bit of a shame. But I mean, really, to be honest, I don't think they're necessary. Like, they're nice to have, but they're not really necessary for it such a small scale like double O and you have the um, smoke deflectors or elephant ears as some people like to call them it's the nameplate Duke of Gloucester, Gloucester. and you have a really nice separately applied um, handrail going up um, the engine and then right there if you can if it'll focus you have a warning sign that basically says, you know, warning of overhead wires and stuff. And a builder's plate. If I can focus in on it. I think that says built on oh no. a focus. I'm pretty sure that says built 1956 crew. Um, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it says. 
um, you have really nice orange lining all along the foot plate. I mean, just look at that. It, it looks so smart because it shows all of the wheels. You don't have wheel arches to cover up the wheels. It just looks so powerful. So, coming along the cylinders, you have really nice molded detail up inside of there. I, I don't know what that is. Oh, I think it has to do with the special um, valve gear this has. Now, most engines have, a, I think it's Caprati valve gear. I think that's what it's called. No, no, no. A wall shard. A wall shards valve gear. I'm not sure if that's pronounced. But the Duke of Gloucester, it has a special valve gear. I think it's called the Caprati valve gear. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it on the um, information sheet. I think that's what it called, but if I'm wrong, you can um comment below and correct me. So basically, you have the linkage, which was uh, it's basically an inside valve gear because you have the linkage right here, and then wait, why is it so shiny? I moved the lighting a bit, yeah. So you have the linkage right there, and then you have a little spinning rod that comes out of the cylinder into a little gearbox right here and I believe that is what makes the wheels turn so instead of having the inside cylinders and stuff you have this little rod that comes out spinning to a gearbox and then moving the wheels I'm not entirely sure how that works but I think that's how it works and Hornby have done a really nice job molding off that detail because you have all of the cylinder valves you have all of the little, you have the shaft. It doesn't turn because it's plastic, it's molded uh, out of plastic, but still really nice. Um, you have this little pipe going up into the foot plate, running board. I'm not really sure what that does, but it still looks really nice. And so, coming to the back, you have all of your piping and tubing. Um, it's all molded and it's unpainted. But it should be easy to paint it yourself, because in real life, I think it's they're like gold and bronze and stuff. But it should be easy to paint yourself. And then you have the painted um, red and white hubcaps, I think. Um, I'm not sure what they're called, but yeah. Those. And they have nice spring, molded spring detail on the trucks, on the rear truck. Um, it's non-flanged, like most of Hornby's. Pacifics nowadays be so that they can go around um, tighter bends like second radius and such so yeah and then coming to the cab we have tons of rivets if it'll focus tons of rivets um, 8p 71,000 that's the number 8p is the um, power rating and then you have beautiful Glazed windows, um, the driver's window right here and here. And then you have another one of them, those warning stickers um, for overhead wires. And you have all of these pipes. Now I don't, I don't know what these pipes do either, but they're molded, um, just like these ones down here. And you have a really fine handrail running the length of the boiler. And going all the way up to the smoke box. And you have this really nice painted, like, gold brass little pipe that goes to the boiler. I think those are the feeder pipes. I might be wrong. Um, but comment below if you know. And then the, that was it called? The cab roof vents. Um, on some Hornby locos, like the premium A4s, they do slide back, but not on this one. And then more molded pipes in detail up there. And then you make way your way along the top of the firebox. They have some rivets. And then you have the two safety valves. Um, this The really nice orange and black lining for BR Express engines on the top of the boiler and the dome and then you come along to the front of the smoke box where you have tons of rivets again and the chimney, the double chimney 
And so, yeah, I think that's it for this side. And then if we quickly turn the engine around. You can see on this side, there's no real difference. Um, except for the fact that the whistle is on this side. It's kind of bent right there. It's very fragile. Um, so you have the whistle on this side and... Yes, now my model was partially damaged during shipping because, as you probably know, I live in the United States and all of my um, models come from the UK. So this one ha came with an issue that this rod right here is not connected to the um, little gearbox thing on the valve gear. So as you can see, it's like just floating around on its own. Unlike on the other side, where it's connected and it spins around just fine. However, in the box, it was bent. The um, this plastic part right here was bent inwards, and so it snapped off the connection between the rod and the plastic part. As you can see, there's a huge gap in between. So I'm not really sure how to fix that. That'll probably be a future project or something. Um. But yeah, that's it, really, for the loco. Um, oh yeah, an underframe detail. You have um, brake rods that I fitted myself. Um, flangeless wheels underneath. And on the other side, before I forget, you have the um, speedometer, which spins around. It's really nice because it's like an actual rubber um, pipe or tube that they have running to this little... Um, link, a little piece of linkage right there. So I think that's a really nice touch. Um, so yeah, that's really it for the main engine. And then coming towards the tender, you have, again, tons and tons of rivets. You have the BR Late Crest, I believe. Or is that early? No, I'm pretty sure that's Late Crest. Um... Cab detail, there is some, if I can just bring the light in, there is some cab detail, but it's all molded, as you can see. Wait, let me see if I can get a better angle. Uh, you can just see that it's all molded and it's unpainted, as you can see, but I mean... To be honest, like sprung buffers, I, I don't really think it's a necessary detail because with the train and the tender connected up like this and running around the layout, you can't really see inside the cab too well. So that's not really a deal breaker. Um, you have nice molded coal load, simulated coal load on the tender for the um, fireman to shovel into the firebox. So that's nice. A nice molded, painted, um, sil silver painted handrail on the side, right there. And some footsteps leading towards the cab. Let me move the light back a bit. Um, just like on the rear wheel set, you have painted, huh, um, what's the word for them? Uh, I'll just call them hubcaps for now, and I'm pretty sure that's not the word. Um, red and white, red and yellow painted hubcaps. Um, nice spring detail over the wheels. And, um, yeah. And then you have underframe detail brake rigging, which I also fitted myself. Um, it came in the details pack, which I forgot to show you, but I'll show you after I'm done reviewing the tender. And then towards the back, you have some nice rivet detail. You have a... Oh, everything's messing up there. Okay, you have more warning stickers. If it'll focus. You have a plaque... Which I'm sure that says... Hold on, I'll zoom in in a minute to see what that says. And another builder's plate. And then you have some nice ladders on the back. The plaque on the back says... 
break no Brie two and then twelve seventy one um and something else but I can't tell what that says. I think it says nineteen sixty four or something. I'm not sure. I, I really don't know what that says. It's too small to read. And then you have fifty one hundred on the back right there. Um and I can't read the rest, it's just too small. And while we're down here, um some really nice buffer beam detail. You have non sprung buffers, but they're shiny. Now they're a bit too shiny for my liking. But you can just like paint paint some like black paint to make them look like they're all grubby from like banging into coaches and stuff. And you have some nice rivets on the buffer beam, the coupling, the coupling hook right there, and the other buffer. And the train does have NAM couplings. If you can just see it right there with a the dovetail connector. So you can swap it out for any coupler, coupler you like. Now I'm not really a fan of dovetail connections because um, I find they're too flimsy and break. But that's just me, so, yeah. And on the top of the tender, we have some nice detail. We have the coal load, which looks really good. It's, it's non-removable, I believe. I don't think you... Yeah, you can't remove it. But to be honest, I don't think I would really want to remove it. You can just add your own fake coal on top if you want to look more realistic. You have this little, like, pipe coming out. Now, that this is the coal pusher mechanism, I believe. It's like a mechanical thing that moves forward and pushes coal so that the farming can easily get to it. And then the water filler cap where you put the water in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's move the logo out of the way. I have a quick look at the accessories. Now they came in a smaller bag, but to be easier I just put them in a Ziploc bag. Now what makes this engine really special is that you have etched nameplates, as you can see, Duke of Gloucester. Now they say to attach it with blue tack. Now this is a slight issue where I live because in America, they do not sell blue tack, believe it, believe it or not, for my UK viewers. But blue tack is just one of those things that you cannot buy in America. So I meant to buy some when I was in the UK. But I didn't, so I'm going to have to find another way to attach them on. So moving on, you have some more, you have some, you have um, an extra NEM coupling right there. You have some piping detail. Um, you have the drain cocks right there. And then I think those are some footsteps to put on the cab, I believe. Um, and some more pipes and stuff. And, yeah, that's it. Now, the reason I haven't put any of this deet most of this detail on is because, um, I prefer my steam engines not to have a coupling on the front. And the pipes that you see inside the bag are very difficult to put on because there are no holes on the buffer beam. They actually go on from underneath. And I was like, no, that's too difficult. So all I put on was the pipe, was the vacuum pipe, I think. And I think that that looks very nice. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So yeah, now that we've had a review, um, it's time to get on the track and see how she runs or sounds. So here we are at the layout with this beautiful logo. I mean so here is a demo of her sounds. So function one turns on the sounds. Function two is long whistle. Function three is coupler clank. Function 4 is short whistle. Um, function 5 is the injector. F 
function 6 is wheel slip. Function 7 is pole shoveling. Function 8 is blow down. I guess that's like to get rid of excess steam or something. Um, function 9 is the safety valve. Function 10 is the coal pusher. Function 11 is the cylinder cocks. Function 12 is the brake. Function 13 is the blower. Function 14 is the guard's whistle. Function 15 is slamming doors. Fun and function 16 is the fireman's breakfast. So this is like um, bacon and eggs like cooking on the fireman's shovel. So I find that's really clever of me to include that. And then function 17 is to decide between coasting and chuffing sounds when the engine is going. So yeah, let's get some running shots of her. Oh. Well, as Innocent EAT would say, somebody spilled their coffee in that coach. But we'll just ignore it for now. So here she is at the station. Um, and they are ready to depart. So F15 to slam the doors. And then the guards whistle. And then we're ready to depart. So now if the train wants to stop, you just slow it down. You turn off the chuffing sound so it's coasting. And then as she's slowing down, you hit the brakes. And that's it. 
So, all in all, a very nice model. With, and she sounds beautiful, especially for the money, because the TTS sound system cost almost a hundred pounds less than the premium versions of DCC Sound by Hornby. But, I mean, to be honest, you can't really tell the difference. I mean, she's just beautiful. It sounds even better. So, that concludes my review of the Duke of Gloucester. And, once again, I want to thank you all for 50 subscribers. I mean, that means so much to me. And, so here's to 50 more. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.